I take this opportunity to welcome all the Propacon 23 attendees to today's panel discussion. It is our endeavor to host industry leaders and experts and to create meaningful dialogues on the most interesting and provocative issues of the day. Uh, today's talk is about development in Pune and around uh, in Mumbai and around Mumbai and its surrounding areas. Join me in today's conversation is Bharat Lori, partner at BDL Estate and Property, an established premier real estate consultancy firm based out of Mumbai. Uh, welcome, Bharat, and thank you for joining us today. Thank you, thank you, Sangeet, so much. Hello, everyone. Uh, privileged to be here on this forum today. Yeah, very nice, uh, Bharat. Uh, you are aware in the last few years uh, we will touch up on, on the uh, focus on the infrastructure development. Uh, which is happening around Dubai. So as it is, you are aware, uh, you have been an active uh, consulting agency and an advisory company here in Dubai, uh, that we have a lot of infra development happening, right? So when we started off with the Bumbi Pune Highway, then we went to the new airport, which is coming up in Navi Mumbai. We have a lot of Trans Harbor uh, development happening. Then we have the coastal road, uh, so there is Bombay uh, and the Mumbai surrounding areas, which is Navi Mumbai and going right up to Pune, has seen a lot of infrastructure development, right? And we all right. know that of us being in this industry for a long number of years, that any infra development obviously gives a boost to the city uh, where the development is happening, right? Absolutely. So that is going to be the basis of uh, the foundation of today's discussion. Uh, obviously, we can we'll keep this uh, as engaging, as interesting uh, for all our attendees uh, who are uh, uh, watching us right now. And once again, welcome to all of you for attending today's session. Uh, very quickly, uh, I just want to, we, we can break this up into uh, the, the various uh, real estate uh, asset classes. Uh, we'll focus purely, uh, mostly on residential uh, because that's where the big market is. Uh, we all are aware, Bharat, that Mumbai, uh, because of various reasons, uh, especially we had the stamp duty reduction during the development, when the real estate developers had a 50% stamp duty reduction, where uh, the developers took the advantage. And now we have a lot of uh, projects which are already been launched, and there are a number of projects which are going to be launched in the next six months to one year. So if we can have some figures, uh, we are looking at about 10 crore square feet of uh, residential development in the pipeline only in the MMR region. So when I say MMR, I mean Bombay, Thane, and Navi. Right? Right. That is where we are seeing uh, the, the change. Uh, obviously, we have a lot of consolidation happening. Uh, we have new uh, developers also joining us uh, in, and expanding the ecosystem and the landscape. And we have a lot of corporate development. So let's start with your first initial thought, Bharat. You've been in this business for a long number of years. Let's just let's start from the post Vera session. Where do you see the change uh, in the last five years? You know, it's been more than five years of Vera. Where do you see from your perspective, from your lens, from a real estate consulting uh, and, and an expert, uh, uh, from your perspective, Bharat? So like the premise you already shared, you know, RERA, of course, has been super important in bringing in transparency and clarity, you know, for all parties involved, whether it's the developer, the uh, the brokers, or most importantly, the buyers, right? There's been a lot of clarity, a lot of uh, synchronization because of that. And then, like you said, you know, of course, Bombay being a metro city, our infrastructure, unfortunately, hasn't grown as fast as uh, a lot of the other big cities, which is now finally catching up. And of course, it's definitely giving a big boost uh, to real estate in our city. Uh, so anything in and around major infrastructure development has been doing good over the last few years. You touched upon uh, the Navi Mumbai airport. Real estate around those areas of Navi Mumbai and Thani have actually probably been the fastest growing uh, uh, real estate in uh, the MMR region, uh, even around uh, the Trans Harbor link, you know, which is your areas of Sivri, Parel, Vadala, those areas have done uh, quite well over the last five years. 
So all these areas where, uh, you know, infrastructure development is happening have been doing good and I think will continue to do good. The most important, according to me, along with the Trans Harbor Link being the metro, like we've seen in many metro cities around the world, you know, in fact, all developments where accessibility to metro is there have seen phenomenal growth over the years. So I'm hoping and I, it's my personal belief that, you know, uh, good locations, having good access to the metro will do good in the next few years as well. And I think, you know, that's uh, uh, a big change also, right? When you don't have connectivity between uh, the, the nodal points, so whether it is Andheri and Neriman point, you have a shift where there is a price difference, right? Because of the connectivity, uh, those pockets which are very well connected are obviously priced higher as compared to the places which are comparatively less connected, right? So whenever, we have, whenever we have a new railway station or like you said, now the new metro, so like uh, the case in point would be the Andheri Ghatkopa, uh, the metro line, because the first line to open up. Suddenly the Chembur and the Ghatkopa micro market kind of evolved, right? And, it, and there was a lot of, I think the most important thing is from the Mumbai's perspective or MMR perspective or from that perspective, even Thana now, so we are now seeing micro markets being developed. So you have a micro market, you know, earlier we used to divide Mumbai into just four zones, right? North, West, South, East, the partner centers of Abhapia. Up to, if there is, you can see a very clear cut uh, development and these micro markets being created which is giving the opportunity uh, for our, you know, uh, buyers more opportunity than more option. What is your take on these uh, evolving micro markets? Pele ek address hua karta tha jo hum utte the andheri for example, right? Ab andheri ke aage oshi vara ho gaya hai, oshi vara gore ga ho gaya. Kahi na kahi abhi you know ham log jaise ju ka humne dia nagar ko upper ju bol diya. What is your perspective on these new? Evolving micro market, which are between the two major uh, points, like say Andheri to Juhu, for example. So, like you rightly pointed out again, you know, these micro markets have seen more infrastructure development in terms of the roads are better. You have malls, schools, you know, access to entertainment, everything come up much more than what was available in sa the southern part of Bombay or you know, parts where uh, there were no new land parcels available to create such infrastructure. So all this has definitely helped the growth in the surrounding areas, you know, like, so if Andheri has gotten saturated, Oshivara has picked up. Similarly, you know, uh, even in uh, central, south central Bombay, if lower Parel and Verli are getting saturated, Parel and Sivri are picking up because there is access to land, because there is access to create new infrastructure. And that's what people want today, right? I mean, when you aspire to grow uh, as a person also, your, your needs and requirements where real estate are concerned also grow in similar manner. So you want something new. You want accessibility to, you know, all your lifestyle amenities and everything. And this is what's happening. So wherever this is coming up, people are getting drawn towards that. Uh, that's that's a very valid point. I, uh, I just like the way you said, you know, it's getting extended now. And we are now moving from one uh, micro market getting, you know, extended to the other micro market. Uh, and you just now, uh, we, I just spoke about aspiration, right? So we have a, India is now and Mumbai, uh, uh, where uh, there is 70% of the sales is uh, being uh, uh, garnered from Mumbai and NCR in Delhi area. Uh, what is your perspective on the aspirational buyer? Uh, we are, uh, I'm sure we have a lot of attendees who are attending. Uh, we'll be having young professionals, young entrepreneurs, a lot of startup founders. Uh, before the pandemic, you know, the generation, the younger generation was planning not to buy property. There was a lot of uh, so-called focus on just renting. Now, after the pandemic, there is this shift towards having a secured home. And a lot of societies also became a little bit, you know, a little bit strict on bachelors and uh, various other kind of rental accommodation. So what is your take on, on the aspirational buyer, the young buyers? What is your advice to these new, they, they could be a lot of them could be the first time buyers. What is your advice? What is your uh, point of view uh, for these young uh, buyers, the aspirational buyers? See, so, so, even, 
sorry so aspirational buyers also you know we engage with so many people on a daily basis and i think i tell everybody to first define what you know the real estate requirement is from the point of view of whether it is only for an investment purpose or a self use purpose if it is for a self use purpose then you know you can probably narrow down on more niche markets or markets where uh, uh, infrastructure is already existing because you want to use it today and whereas if it is for an investment purpose one can explore you know upcoming areas where infrastructure is growing along with uh, real estate development happening so those areas uh, like you said the mmr region is great for investment uh, for self use of course you know it again comes down to individual perspectives but uh, it, bombay is definitely at uh, a good crossroads in terms of both actually like you rightly mentioned the shift from renting to sales or purchase is definitely happening people uh, indians are anyway you know very attached to real estate being an and not only an asset but uh, you know like they say everyone wants to have a home of their own so most important from that point of view and i think uh, the economy by god's grace has also been helping india is definitely grow, growing faster than most other yeah. nations so, so that's been a push you know as long as this continues and with the support that everything is happening it's a good time to be in the real estate market and it's definitely a good time to go ahead and buy that first house and 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 when we uh, let me now slightly move uh, uh, to the next uh, uh, segment of buyers uh, from the aspirational buyers from the first time buyers the young buyers who they are really constituting a, a lot of the the sales right now especially in the the mid luxury segment uh, and there's a lot of shift for nuclear families So, like you said, they are. There is a need of buying and owning a home. What is your perspective on the NRI buyers? NRI buyers, are you finding uh, the NRIs across, uh, you know, uh, UK, USA, UAE? Uh, I've seen a lot of the real estate companies now having offices uh, across the the world. Especially UAE is is the favorite. You know, you talk of any of the top uh, real estate companies. whether they are the developers or they are the marketing companies everybody seems to be having a a presence in dubai why is this sudden uh, rise and interest in india from nrs see so again you know i think because of all this uh, clarity with rera coming in uh, our markets are finally maturing you know from an unregulated market to becoming a regulated market so the outsiders are now realizing that you know and the way india is growing this is probably the right time to have an asset back home with the uh, opportunities uh, stability and the good developments today a lot of our developers are delivering projects which are at par with anything that you see in the uae or even the us i mean i've seen developments in the uae and some of our buildings can definitely beat those too so the nris i think were always concerned previously about not having enough clarity and uh, you know a little bit of the fear as to who they were dealing with because they probably uh, used to a little more systematic approach to business or to buying real estate but with rera and uh, you know a lot of the legalities falling in place now after that a lot of comfort has come in and the nris play a very very big role in the mumbai market today a lot of the purchases if you look at data even in the past year i would i wouldn't be surprised if at least 20 to 30% of uh, purchases have been from the nris yeah that's that's a very and i think rera has not only uh, you know with with last 6 years and with the kind of real estate development happening india is going to be contributing 18% to the gdp and uh, we will be a 1 trillion dollar contribution to the indian growth you know india is uh, now racing towards uh, uh being a, a 5 trillion dollar economy and out of that 1 trillion dollar is going to be in, is going to be real estate contribution which may, which makes it about 20% right, right. And what rera you are saying has kind of corporatized and given the confidence to the home buyer that's what you are saying right where would you want to use the same uh, parameters for the real estate brokers and the marketing agencies do you think that there's such a because that's the vital link between the buyer and the developer so we are seeing a lot of developers getting 
profitalize and corporatize. Are you seeing the same trend happening from the real estate channel partners and the agencies' point of view? Absolutely. So I think there's been a lot of consolidation, even in the broking fraternity. There's been a lot of partnerships. There's, I mean, people are upskilling themselves for sure to keep up with, you know, the the foreign culture, the you know, whatever changes Rera has brought about, we need to upskill ourselves and be part of that too. So I think it's good. Whatever is moving, see, ultimately for a realtor or a broking house, a marketing agency, you know, there's only so much you can market. It all comes down to relationships that you build with people and that comfort that you give them, you know. There has to be a need for them to reach out to us and we need to fulfill that need with our service. And I think it's happening. I think we're all learning from each other and we're moving in the right direction. So this is a very nice point, uh, Bharat. I want to just, this is on a personal uh, level, I'm asking you, what is your change, you know, when you, uh, you've you been uh, a partner in this company for a good amount of decade, I think it's a two, three year decade, but perhaps more. Uh, where do you see the change now? So even in your company where, you know, you have your team, uh, your executives, are you are you now stressing on the consumers, uh, uh, you know, the user experience, uh, the customer satisfaction processes? Because the reason why I'm asking you, this is all going to help the entire industry to evolve, which will again beneficial to the home buyer. Right. So for our company, it's always been uh, relationships first. And we've always stressed upon the importance of engaging with our clients, understanding the needs in detail. And, you know, ultimately, then it comes down to service because we are a service industry. So if I don't give that kind of service, there's no need for anybody to engage with me. There's, okay. there's thousands of brokers in the industry, thousands of brokers in each city today. But I think we've all grown... Uh, Interaction, most important. Interaction with like-minded people, most important. And, you know, putting ourselves in their shoes, you know, treating them the way we would want to be treated and understanding that it's hard-earned money that they are deploying. So keeping that in mind, all these things help. All these things help build relationships and, of course, sell real estate. And, and are you seeing a lot of new age, uh, uh, you know, a lot of uh, uh, MBAs and professionals also joining the broking business now? You know, it's uh, we're getting. Uh, you see a change there also. You know, you have a more of educated and skilled uh, professionals now taking up real estate as a, as you know, it's it's as being an entrepreneur now. Absolutely. So I honestly, I think we started uh, our real estate company around twelve years ago, and the market even in twelve years has grown a lot. It has become a lot of more professional professionals coming in. Uh, you know, what used to be a taboo industry, the broking industry, has now definitely become a structured industry. Yes. Uh, with people realizing the importance of having offices. Earlier, you had people just working out of anywhere and everywhere. But, you know, now all those structures are falling in place. People want credibility and people want that name and want to work with people who have that credibility. So it has the right... A lot of MBAs, a lot of new companies coming up every day. And I think there is enough scope in a market like ours, which is, you know, continuously growing for, it's like an all encomp encompassing market, right? There's enough work for everyone. Nice. So we discussed about the developers. There's a lot of, uh, you know, consolidation happening. We spoke about brokers, uh, the agencies. Uh, let's, uh, let's really quickly touch upon the most important element for any home buyer is the access and the availability to housing finance. What is your perspective on the changing dynamics of the housing finance? I can see a lot of banks, private banks, public banks, government banks, corporate banks, all wanting to now lend that home buyer. We have some tech companies also, right? So uh, what is your take? Because that's a very, very crucial for a home buyer that they are able to get a home. Absolutely. So there's absolutely no issue where liquidity is concerned. Our banks and NBFCs, uh, any institution is flush with funds right now. The interest rates, of course, like they've been going up all over the world, have gone up in India. That's, only a, that's a matter of concern right now, right? Yeah, that's, so that, that's also not that of a concern. Of, yeah, so that's a little bit of a concern, but otherwise, besides that, I, I you know, people are okay with borrowing and are keen to borrow now because 
we're growing as a country and you can't grow without debt. So as long as it's controlled debt and as long as you plan it well, you're, there's absolutely no reason why you should not take debt. And home loans are easily available in India, especially home loans are still your cheapest form of uh, debt. So people understand that. And, you know, you can put your own money to better use in your own businesses, use this debt to pair off your interest rates also, or to pair off your expenses also, and, uh, you know, get yourself a home while doing that. So when people who understand the dynamics of this will definitely continue to borrow and there's enough money available. Very interesting. But I want to now very quickly uh, take our uh, attendees uh, uh, and who are watching this uh, uh, session now. Uh, there is, uh, uh, because again, uh, uh, the cost of reputation, we have now branded developers, corporate developers, we have Rera coming in. So the home buyer is comparatively uh, much more, uh, you know, uh, he doesn't mind uh, uh, taking that one risk of going for an uh, under construction project. Uh, there has been some delays uh, by some developers. It's not necessarily their problem. There has been issues with some kind of government regulations. Where do you advise, where do you want, or you want to caution the home buyer uh, who is buying an under construction project? Because that's where the capital appreciation is going to be there as compared right. to buying a lock in key apartment. Again, pandemic ke pehle ye bhi ek dar tha. Hamare paas jab clients aate the, where is your uh, you know where do you think that shift is happening now so again you know a lot of the developers as you know have now become corporate entities corporate structures a lot of them are listed on our stock exchanges so are regulated by tighter rules even beyond uh, rera you know from financial institutions and everything so if you are buying under construction real estate in one of the premium developers who has been around for a while, who has access to money, who is a listed entity preferably, I don't see any issues with these developers, you know. And I think, like you rightly said, if somebody wants to look at it from an investment point of view, or if someone even is aspiring but knows that, you know, it's an aspirational buy, but there will be a little deferment of payment required, those people can definitely explore the under construction market. And if you're buying with the right developer, with the RERA being strong now, I don't think there's anything to worry about. All these issues that were there a few years ago have now all, you know, predominantly to most effect been taken care of. Very nice. Uh, a very quick now, I want to take our... Uh friends who are watching us, who are with us, joined us now, is uh, we've, we've discussed the key factors, the key elements, and we are now understanding that uh, from a very opaque market, we're getting into a transparent market. Now, again, um, uh, there are going to be uh, some uh, development, some developers where there are issues. That's okay. That is being solved. And we can see a lot of efforts being taken by the industry, by the associations. The another huge development is happening is that all the association, whether it is Gadai, MCHI, Naritpo, whether it's the Brokers Association, NIR India, all have joined hands to educate uh, the buyers and to empower and enable the, their own stakeholders. So we as brokers are being empowered. The developers are going through a lot of, uh, you know, upscaling. So that's another big, uh, big shift which is happening. Uh, do you want to uh, uh, pick any uh, micro market or, you know, in, in especially uh, in Mumbai, where you would believe is a, a better option from an investment perspective or from a buying perspective? So Mumbai lots, honestly, you know, uh, like I said, depending on the kind of amount that you want to invest, the markets that I personally like from an investment point of view would still be MMR, Thani, Navi Mumbai is great. Your central central parts of Mumbai, your Vadala, Matunga, Sivri is still an interesting option to buy. Baikala, Lalbagh, all those things taken. On the western side, you know, I think it's become more uh, premium development. Uh, so, Worli, Lower Parel has now become a little premium, but you still have interesting properties available at interesting prices, you know, where some properties and you're getting those kind of lifestyle amenities. 
And the most neglected part, which was South Bombay, you know, over the last few years where there was sort of an exodus where people were moving from South Bombay towards North <laughs> and Central Bombay. Though that market is actually looking the most interesting to me because finally... Uh, Bharat, this is the most uh, interesting aspect of today's discussion. You know, and I've been attending a lot of the uh, developer sessions and meets. Uh, so we, you know, uh, 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 two decades, three decades now in the business. So we, we used to always have this migration, right? So from South Bombay to North Bombay. Now this is the first time what I call is reverse migration. Absolutely. So now we're having, now we're having all these so-called aspirational buyers or people who have made a lot of wealth are moving now from the uh, from Villepalde, from Chu, from Adheri, towards Burnley, towards Parel. So there is this, again, a reverse shift happening. And suddenly, so South Mumbai market has also picked up. And, you know, ek, humare pe, uh, uh, ye ek hai, ki, you know, this is one thing. And you know, where are you from? I'm going to Bandra, but Bandra doesn't go to Bandra. Bandra doesn't go to Bandra, right? So there's a little bit of a change kha, kha, kha ja jata hai when you're towards the... Uh, South so you're saying South Bombay is now again uh, coming, you know, uh, joining the other uh, perspective which we had discussions over the last uh, uh, 20, 25, 30 minutes is the infrastructure development is happening, connectivity is happening. So now, so now it is uh, affordable. Are you saying now South Bombay, which was not that affordable, has now it comparatively become affordable? Is that one reason? So I think the infrastructure boost has really helped. You know, the coastal road, uh, South Bombay was considered over the last few years to be the most unconnected part of Mumbai, you know, and that's the reason people were migrating to other parts. But now with the coastal road coming up, with the metro coming up, all of South, all of Bombay is going to be connected to South Bombay. So, you know, and plus there were not too many land parcels available to redevelop in uh, South Mumbai. But now with society redevelopment picking up, a lot of, lot of these big uh, real estate players, a uh, lot of the listed companies are doing developments in places like Altamount Road, in places like Malabar Hill, even going all the way down to, you know, Cuff Parade and all, everything's changed. Everything. So people, the HNIs, ultra HNIs who want to have that, uh, you know, the landmark address, are going to be the happiest because if you're getting uh, all your amenities and all your infrastructure whilst you know being able to be in South Bombay, they can't be anything better. So we're definitely seeing people wanting to come back. And I think it's a very, very interesting uh, thing that's happening that people who had left over the last few years now all want to come back to South Bombay. It's like a homecoming back for South Bombay right now. <laughs> so very quickly, very interesting point. Uh, I can we can. A touch on one very, very, uh, uh, I can see the big change happening, which we call a leisure home, uh, uh, holiday homes. So, as you have South Bombay, ke mein baat kiya, uh, because of now the accessibility, suddenly Alibag has become a hot spot for the HNI. Oh, yeah. We have the Pika Padukun already buying uh, property in Alibag. There are a lot of gated communities happening. Uh, so, now, and so, if we talk about it, Kandana, Lulavne, Haase, Nikalte, Muna Jate, Muna Se, Yaha Pe Aate, Chakaya, Makan, Sab Dekhte. So there is this now second home culture because again, people have now realized they can work from home, right? What is your take on the development of these so-called, which kahin kahin toh mujhe lagta hai, wo second home bhi first home ho jayega. What is your perspective on the development of these so-called new, uh, you know, uh, uh, residential developments happening around Mumbai city and around Pune. So a lot of the people, you know, we talk to now also feel that they've missed the bus where this is concerned and that during COVID was the right time to buy in Alibag, was the right time to buy in Lonavla or Goa or any of these nearby spaces, you know, the nearby locations. But I think this trend is going to continue and I think it's still a great asset to own, you know, if you can to have that second home, which can honestly eventually become your first home. You have access to Alibag via the Roro, the roads are getting better, you can reach Alibag today in three hours, maybe over the next couple of years you can reach there in an hour and a half and then, you know, by road, so which is a big, big boost from an infrastructure point of view, which will definitely add to the values of these properties. Today, there's talks of them uh, making this road to Goa, which is going to take you there from Mumbai to Goa in five and a half hours. So that's another big market, you know, 
people feel that it's already saturated but i think there's still a lot of potential in the second home market karjat alibag these places are still of a lot of interest to a lot of people so bharat has been a very very engaging uh, a session with you a pleasure talking to you now i want to now put you a little bit on the spot right now uh you can you can give us i know it's a very difficult question uh, because you really have to have an analyst mindset but still with all these ex- years of experience which you have what you've seen the last 5 years what do you want to do some kind of prediction or where the market is going to be going what kind of appreciation are we going to be having anything from uh, you know uh, from the uh, so called forecasting uh, point of view so you know mumbai is a very big city like we all know and it's always over the last many years grown in pockets and i feel that's going to continue to happen some pockets are continue to going to continue to grow some pockets are going to stagnate so you know areas where there's a lot of inventory a lot of uh, inventory overhang will probably not see a very good appreciation uh areas which are up and coming will probably see more of an appreciation and the more niche markets like we've seen in the recent past you know like south bombay and all i think those areas should do better now because inventory overhang over there will be less but i think honestly you know if you think of it or look at it from a five year perspective india growing it's not possible that bombay doesn't grow so i think real estate also <laughs> bombay will be growing <laughs> we still, I even I know I'm surprised, Bharat. Uh, maybe we have infrastructure. देखते हैं, right? I was in Bangalore a uh, few weeks back, few months back, rather. हम बोलते हैं बहुत complain करते हैं कि infrastructure crumble कर रहा है. लेकिन फिर भी हमको रहना इधर ही है, you know? Absolutely. कोई थोड़ा सा एक flip side हो रहा है. But other than that, uh, I think Mumbai is a very big micro market, a big market rather. And within Bombay, like we said, we have the micro markets now developing. Uh, Bharat, your last few words for all our attendees who have been patiently watching us, listening to you, and it has been a pleasure talking to you to a uh, real expert in real estate. And I, this has had been a very impromptu uh, session. So there was no script, nothing, no question answers before. So dil se jo bhi baat kariye, Bharat, bahut acha laga hai aapse baat karte hue. Abhi kuch, do you want to just say uh, some, you know, the uh, These are mostly the last uh, remarks, the last comments from your side, from a real estate expert perspective. So I am a hardcore Mumbaiite, and I completely believe in everything where Mumbai is concerned, and especially, of course, being from the real estate industry. Also, from every point of view, I think it's important to be in the uh, real estate market in Bombay. You will never be disappointed if you. you know remain invested for the long term point of view whether it is to make money or whether to call this lovely city your home it's a very very i mean it's a good time to be in the real estate market in bombay right now very nice bharat uh, as i said pleasure talking to you and i would like to you know, also thank sapna and her team at tropic angel to give us this opportunity uh, it's been a lovely session with you bharat and uh, i would like to thank you Thanks, Apna. Thank the property angel team Bye, and bye, all our attendees, all our friends, our broker friends who are watching us and listening us, and uh, do write us, uh, property angel. Uh, if you have any queries, we will still be more than happy to engage and take up any questions. And once again, thank you, Bharat, for joining in, and have a wonderful thank day. God bless. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. See you all. Thank you. Bye.